What's up guys? In today's video, we go up to Stewart, Florida and we have a sleigh fest catching as many Spanish Max as we could possibly want. And we're gonna catch him, obviously catching one right now. We're gonna clean them and cook them for y'all. This is a Spanish mackerel cast clean cook. <laughs> Woo! Set hook on these suckers. Uh, all right, guys, we're at Pix Lake. Nice. Get them. Get them, get them. You want me to get the net? Yeah. What should I do? The big hurry up, net? Hurry up. Okay. Watch out. Watch out. Oh, jeez. These, these things get bite. Get them up. Get them up. Over here. Whew. You got them side hooked. <laughs> nice. Nice job. Dope. All right, we gotta pick our big ones. We can only keep 15. This one's big? Yeah, medium, medium. Way to go, guys. We're killing it. Medium. Hooked up. Coming in. Another Mac. It's okay. Little guy, nice. Sick, this is really cool fishing. We're actually like, seeing the fish behind the boat and like kind of hand picking the ones we want to catch is pretty sick. A lot of fun. Oh, you lose a lot of lures. Sick. Sizzle's hauling them over the side like crazy. Sick. Jesus, the best. Let me help. I can do it, I can do it. That's how you do it. Put it in the house. I am oh. catching and netting his fish. <laughs> Ow! There nice you one. go. Not the biggest. That's a nice one. Yeah. Not no little one. I, I uh, switched from, I was using 20 pound and you get bitten off every five seconds. So I just put a little piece of trace wire. I'm not sure if that's the per, approved procedure for the commercial guys, but uh, I just go to fish and I was getting plenty of bites. So all good in the hood. Woo! Nice, nice. Look at that little baby compared to that monster. <laughs> Stud. Okay, so this is a lure that we've been using. Actually, that Brian's been using. He's letting me use it right now. You can see a little wire trace right here, and that is keeping the lure attached because they just cut it right off with their sharp teeth. But this thing is like really cheap. It's under a buck, or maybe a buck at the tackle store. They sell a bunch of them variety of different colors out there. The thing works with the little mylar on there. So what you do is you cast it out. Like a medium length, we got a chum slick going on behind us, along with all these dozens of other boats out here today. Let it hit the bottom. We're in about 20 feet of water. Let it hit. Once it hits, you start steady retrieving like this. They really like it fast, and that's usually when they hit it. Give it a little twitches, and then did not catch fish. Let's try it again. Yeah, I was doing jerk-jerk pauses and kind of, I don't know, do whatever. All right. I don't know what this is. It doesn't feel like one. We're gonna see. Oh, it's the... It is one, it's the smallest one of the day, but it's still one. But you can see how much fun this is, y'all. Everybody can come out and do this, catch a blast, have a blast, doesn't matter your age, kids, family day, but this is a spot. Especially here up here in Peck's Lake, you'll know when you get to the spot. The boats are all packed in tight. <laughs> Woohoo! Yeah, I mean, I, I can, I'll put on a fish angler up, I guess, where Peck's Lake is. I'm sure there's 50,000 or, or pins already there, but uh, it's in front of what they call Peck's Lake in the intercoastal. Gotta let one go. It's rather, oh, let one go. That was oh, that was like 18 inches. The limit is like 12 inches or whatever. I know. I, I have a new thing where I gotta let a fish go. Fish okay, dogs. not a bad idea. So anyway, so it's right in front of Peck's Lake. You'll see the boats. Don't miss it. And you can literally throw anything out there. I caught like three of them on just a jig head with no hair on it because they had ripped all the hair off and on wire. <laughs> Pretty wild. That was quick. 
Only took a couple casts. These guys swim so fast, you have to reel the whole time. Oh yeah, that's a fatty. Nice. Heck yeah. All right, so I whipped that one in after I lost one to a shark. But that's probably the biggest for me so far. Getting a little bigger up to Brian's big boy that he caught earlier. But we're gonna get our limit. I have a good feeling. In the boat you go. Whee! Jeez. Jeez. He just woke up. Come on, buddy. Jeez. Jeez sizzle. Crazy. <laughs> crazy, crazy. I don't know how. Oh, he inhaled that thing. Oh, it's right Whew. there. Crazy. Gotta get him before the Goliath gets him. He's just sitting under the boat, waiting for a free meal. There he is. There he is. I see him. Goliath sees my fish. He's coming towards it. Oh my God, he's gonna eat it. See the Goliath? See no. the Goliath? He's right there. Right there, right there. Oh yeah. It's a nice one. Woo! Nice! Whoa. I got a stud, and I got him away from the Goliath. That was insane, insane. There's literally a Goliath grouper, probably like a 50 or 80 pounder, is just chilling underneath the boat right now. And he's literally waiting for a free meal to come on by, which yeah, I did give him one earlier. The uh, a big Spanish mackerel dove deep, and he got it. This one he did not get. This one is my, gonna be my biggest of the day. Check That's a nice out. one. Look how cool the dorsal fin is here too, by the way, guys. Look at that white and black. I think that's so sick. Yeah. Every fish is so sick. They're all so pretty. Yeah. Brian just got stabbed actually by those crazy sharp teeth. His fingers bleeding like crazy. Yeah, most of the blood in the boat right Woo! now is mine. Yes. Well, honey, can you throw my hand? Oh, sorry. I've been cleaning the boat up while she's nice fishing. Nice job, nice job. Yeah, well, otherwise they just roll around. Yeah, so I'm just gonna fish a few more minutes here, see if I can get a record, how many fish I can catch in the next five, 10 minutes. and then it's gonna be time to clean them all for y'all because we have a lot. Woo! That's a nice one too. Oh boy. Oh boy. Sizzle, are you ready to go home yet? I am ready, but I'm having so much fun. Oh. I feel like a commercial fisherman. Pop this is how much I love fishing, y'all. <laughs> oh shoot, oh shoot, oh shoot. Oh shoot what? We made it back to the house, house as you can see. We had a really long day in the water, so this is the next day of me filleting up these beautiful Spanish mackerel that we caught. As long as you take care of these fish, they are excellent. And I know a lot of you guys probably don't believe that they're excellent or whatever. Oh, also wanted to let you know, this is the new Dark Sizzle logo. I'm sure you guys have been seeing it in the recent videos. Thank you for those who have commented, but let us know how you like the logo. This is, these stickers, this is actually a sticker on my shirt, is available on the website right now. So check it out down below in the description if you're interested and yeah we just switched up the logo because we weren't really in love with the first one okay so I've got all of the Spanish mackerel stacked up in here like I said you really want to take care of them I've already got a couple filleted right there we're gonna be smoking some of these bad boys pull a nice big one out for you guys I'm excited I think in my opinion out of all the Spanish mackerel out of all the mackerel species out there the Spanish mackerel is one of the best tasting out there they're really oily the bigger ones have a lot of flavor. And again, it's all about taking care of your fish. If you don't take care of them, it's gonna be fishy. And there's a common misconception about these fish that a lot of people think they're gross and they're really not. Wait till you see this meat. Okay, so I'm using my seven inch Lawaya today. This is a really easy fish to fillet. They don't have too many tough scales whatsoever. So of course you want a sharp knife, mainly so you can feel because you can actually cut through bones really easy. They have really soft skin. So one nice long stroke all the way down, go through the tail, and then we're gonna slab this bad boy off. And you just lay your knife along the backbone 
And these Smith knives, by the way, guys, are actually fairly inexpensive. And if you go to their website, smithproducts.com, you can use my promo code DARSIZZLE15 and get an additional 15% off of your order plus free shipping. And they also make the best knife sharpeners in the, in the world. So now I'm filleting this off. I actually started to cut through the other side because it's so thin, but I just fixed that, no big deal. But this fish, I mean, look at that meat on this guy. This is a jumbo size mackerel in my opinion. They get a little bigger than this, but not much more. But check out that fillet right there. Super, super white. As you can see, I just did that real quick, nice and easy. Turn the knife around, we're gonna slab the other side off. We're gonna make some awesome smoked fish dip. I'm so excited. You see like how, th how thin, they are, thin they are like that, but I got every piece of meat possible that I could possibly get off of this guy. All I gotta do right here to get these prepared for the smoker is just we're gonna take off this little piece of stomach stuff that I got on there. And then right here, you can see how I cut through the bone really easy there too. They just have really soft bodies, which is not a big deal. All right, these two beautiful fillets are ready to go in the smoker now. They look amazing. Look at that white meat. I mean, it looks way better than your average king mackerel that has grayish meat. That is white as it gets. All of these bones right here are gonna stay, so we're just gonna go, get, go ahead, finish up the rest, and make a brine, and we'll, I'll meet you guys at that next step. Got done with the fish. As you can see, it's really dark out here, so I'm gonna run through this real quick, but I got them laid out in this cooler. Beautiful fillet, so excited, so excited. Got another cooler here ready, and I'm gonna brine, brine them in here. So I've already got two gallons of water in here, which is what I need. I'm gonna be adding this honey right here, which is actually honey that my dad harvested from a construction job um, before he got real sick and he couldn't work anymore. So thank you, dad. Fresh Florida raw honey. Doesn't get much better than that. Add a bunch of that in there. Then we're gonna add some kosher salt. I have almost three cups here. Put that in there. You really want a lot of salt because you want as much salt as the ocean water when you brine these fish. And then we're adding dark brown sugar about two cups of that. And I'm just gonna mix it all in here. Really mix it until it gets, until it's completely dissolved really well. And what the brining process does, it really just makes sure that the fillets um, are cured and somewhat preserved. And they also draw out a little bit of the water. So they're gonna be ready to cook. I'm so excited. And we're gonna lay them right in here. Now we're just gonna start laying our fish in here. You wanna do skin side down. And you can see how they're somewhat floating. That means that, that you have enough salt in there. So you wanna just fill it up with all your fish. Gonna add some ice to it. You can see right there how they're really how they're really floating. Sorry that it's so dark, but they're floating. So that's enough salt. You can make your brine however you want. You can add Worcestershire, make it spicier, whatever you prefer. We're just doing a simple brine today. Closing up the cooler, gonna take it in the house, gonna let it brine overnight. And the great thing about these coolers is the fact that they are watertight and airtight. Good to go. After we let those Spanish mac fillets brine overnight, we took them out of the cooler and then we rinsed them off with fresh water. Then we patted them dry with a lot of paper towels and put them on these drying racks and then into the refrigerator to dry out for about, about three hours we'll let them dry. And that's going to cause the form on top of the fillets what they call a pellicle, which is like, a, they get sticky. And that is what the smoke adheres to when they're in the smoker. So now we're going to put them right in the smoker. We got our charbroil smoker. We got four racks of fish you can see. We're putting the biggest on the bottom, the thickest, and up to the smallest. So there we go. We think it's going to take around 20 or 30 minutes to smoke. They're, they're very thin. Uh, and we don't do this a lot, so we're just going to see how it goes. And of course, these are the uh, wood chips we, we used for our electric smoker. See you in a minute. What's up, guys? And welcome to a, kind of an abridged version of cooking with pudding. We already did a lot of the work already, and Darcy is more in charge of this smoking situation. It's her, it's her gig. And she's behind the camera. Thank you, Darcy. But it ended up taking about an hour to smoke that fish. Um, we, you know, we show you the temperature and everything, and you just had a lot of fish in there, and it took about an hour. So we took it out, and I've already uh, crumbled it up in here, all right? But before we make our dip, I just want to do one item of business, and then Darcy's going to talk about a very special day. And I just want to say congratulations to some new Patreons since we did this. And uh, put a link in the beginning of the video if you want to learn more about that. 
but Sean O, A, just has his name as A, Stephen H, Justin M, Greg M, David J, uh, Tim G, Stephen C, and Joe H. I may have said some of those guys before, but the more the merrier. And uh, don't forget, guys, we have those live streams exclusively, uh, Patreon only, every third Wednesday. We just did a great one. It was totally awesome. Thanks, everyone, for showing up for that. Uh, now, Darcy is going to tell you a little bit about this special day. So we do have a fan mail P.O. box for you guys that you guys have been sending us packages over the years. And that info is down below if you're interested. But I went to the P.O. box the other day to get some packages. And sure enough, there was a special package there from Brittany Clark. And today is not necessarily a special day. It's more, I guess, sad day. But today was my dad's 60th birthday. And Brittany, Brittany Clark actually just sent me this like just a few days ago. It was perfect timing. And it just goes to show you that it's timeless. Your memories are timeless and now it's engraved on a clock here. So thank you so much, Brittany. Really appreciate it. I mean, it's beautiful and it's just really thoughtful and special. So thank you so much. His 60th birthday is February 24th and my birthday between me and my dad is a week apart. So my birthday is coming up next, but pretty wild. So thank you so much, Brittany Clark. This is really thoughtful and it's going back up on the wall where it belongs. Now I get to see it every day. And we had the clock already already up and everything like that. It's been up there since, since we got the thing. So we're actually using it. Thank you so much, Brittany, again. All right. Now, when you're making uh, fish dip, you can really just make any concoction you want. It doesn't, there's no specifics. It doesn't really matter. You can make it to taste, all right? So again, we crumpled up all the fish. Just for, with your hands, just shred it up. And today, we're going to do about three quarters of a cup of mayonnaise. I don't have my spatula. And about two thirds of a cup of Cream cheese, we diced up some onions, celery, what are these, chives, star sizzle? Nice, we might need a bigger bowl, huh? And we're gonna put in a splash of Worcestershire sauce. Oh, and on the mayo, guys, it's very important. Anyone knows anything will tell you, you gotta use Dukes, you gotta use Dukes, all right? And we're gonna use a little liquid smoke. It wasn't quite that smoky, and so you can add a little of this for a little more smoke flavor. There you go, boom. And we're gonna add some key limes. And you know I love this little thing? So we're just gonna squeeze some lime in there. And Darcy wanted some garlic in there. I'm actually making my own batch, which is a little bit less mayo and stuff, because I'm gonna dye it, you know, and uh, some hot peppers and stuff like that. So you can really, again, you can do whatever you want. Next, we're just gonna do a little salt and pepper to taste. Other way, turn it upside down. I hate, I hate these things, guys. And like I said, guys, this is, you can do whatever you want. It's like making cement. So you mix it up. And if you don't like how it's mixed up, you know, you can just add some more stuff later. It's no big deal. All right, this is a little time for my favorite part of the episode. What's that? Eating. <laughs> he eats the whole time when he's cooking, too. I do not. You guys know me better than that. All right, so we got our smoked fillets here too. Brian forgot to mention too earlier that like when you pull the fish apart to get it ready for, for the dip, that the skin comes off really easily. It just falls off the meat. And then right in the middle is a bloodline and there's some bones there too. So you just leave the red meat out because that makes it a little fishy. Yes. What do you think, Darcizzle? I think it's good. It's really good. Brian's saying that he doesn't think it's as good as like kingfish. No, no. I was saying it wasn't as fishy. Okay. This well, is better. you had said it weird. Okay. You had said it like it wasn't better. Okay. Sounds good. No, I just want to make sure you tell, you tell the fans so that way they know too. But, you know, kingfish is really oily. This is really oily. Amberjack, um, you know, all those kind of really oily fish are perfect for smoking. I think this is really good. It doesn't taste like kingfish because it's not a kingfish, but it's pretty, it's pretty delicious. And the smoke is... A thousand times better than Yeah, I don't fish. get to have just the fish dip that often, and this is like the second time I've ever made it. So it's amazing. And we again, we picked out on these, the smoked fillets last night. It was delicious. So good. Awesome. So I hope you guys enjoyed that recipe. It was mm -hmm. great. And again, you can just kind of make it up as you go along and add stuff if you want. Yep. So yep, yep. are we ready to wrap it up? Yep, we got to wrap it up, guys. Sorry to get it short like this. and or else we'd be here talking to you forever, but we got some fishing to do in just a few short hours. So we got to get ready, get on the boat, get a little bed, and all that good stuff. So stay tuned for a lot of awesome videos this week. <laughs> <laughs> and until our next adventure, follow, follow your dreams, dreams and keep, keep on, on catching. catching.
Why are you laughing at me? I'm living with you. He's laughing at me first.